Hey guys, while I wait for the paint to dry on some parts for my Motorola 12K2 project, it got me thinking that this would be a great time to take a look at this chassis. This, if you recall from our earlier videos, is kind of a Frankenstein set. Originally, I bought the chassis and pitcher tube to uh, just uh, use the pitcher tube in my Sentinel 430 set because the original one was kind of weak. And I was just going to part out the chassis and that'd be that. But uh, since then, I got some more pitcher tubes, including the one sitting over here. And I ended up uh, never touching the chassis. And a while later, uh, somebody was selling this empty Bakelite cabinet. For a Motorola and I took a chance that one it would survive the journey to my place intact and two that this chassis would actually fit because this chassis is not quite meant to go in this cabinet see this chassis was designed for a 16 inch pitcher tube and this cabinet is for a 17 inch pitcher tube right now I do have a 16 in here and there's a bit of a gap here and there so what I want to try doing is number one pull out the chassis which had been worked on by somebody else and they seem to do a pretty decent job but he was a radio guy and he said he couldn't get it to work and left it at that I really don't know what issues there might be if any two I want to try putting a 17 inch pitcher tube on this chassis to free up the 16 inch pitcher tube for other sets because I got a couple extra 17s and 16s are a bit harder to find Plus, it'll fit in here better. Uh, and this chassis is darn near identical to the one from my Motorola 12K2. That is a TS53 chassis. This is a TS60. The only difference that I could see on the schematic is that this runs at a little bit higher high voltage. I think about 12,000 volts, whereas the other side runs at 9,000. So it's a little bit beefier capacitor here and there, a little bit lower value resistors to allow a little more power to go into the flyback. But other than that, uh, they're darn near identical. So enough talking. I'm going to pull this out, put it up on the workbench, and pick up there. Here's the TS60 chassis up on my workbench. If you've been watching my Motorola 12K2 videos, it should look awfully familiar because from the top, they are identical. Only difference being, this has a rectangular picture too, and that one has a round one. And actually, if you look closely, this has a big scooped out depression down here, big void. And then there's this copper bracket bolted on the front. So this is actually the same stamped sheet metal as the round picture tube set. They just put an adapter on the front to hold a rectangular tube. And just like that set, it's missing a whole bunch of tubes and tube shields. There should be one here. But I've got a few of the tubes, the rest I can dig up. Uh, I was glad to see it has the 6AH6 video output tube because I've only got a couple of those and they're both a little weak. So hopefully that one tests good. Electrolytic caps supposedly have already been rebuilt and it looks like they were done very professionally. I think these are actually stainless steel or chrome plated cans. And they're labeled on here with what look to be the correct values. Uh, we shall see. Surely don't have much to lose by trying it out. So, there's no need for this big picture tube while I first power up. I'm going to use the same steps I did for the 12K2, which first involve uh, using a dim bulb tester. So, I'll get rid of this. The only problem I've got is that I do not have the speaker for this set. That's what would have plugged in here. And it's a field coil speaker. That's why there's four wires. Two go to the field coil, which is an electromagnet used in the speaker. does not have a permanent magnet. And the other two wires go to the voice coil. Two possibilities. One, I can take a chance and plug this into the 12K2 speaker and hope I don't blow it out. Two, I can put an approximate power resistor in here to simulate the uh, field coil. It won't work quite as well as an actual filter choke, but it uh, you know, should give me some uh, some life. But first I'm going to try it without either the picture tube or the um, speaker. 
just to see if the tube filaments light up and nothing shorted out. I turned the chassis around, loosened up the bolts on the frame here and pulled the CRT out. And uh, then I repopulated the missing tubes by pulling tubes from my working 12K2 chassis so I know that all the tubes are good. I think you can really see what I was talking about before that clearly this was designed for a round CRT to sit into this depression and they just bolted on this bar across here for a rectangular CRT. Then you've got this upper portion to hold it all secure. This chassis is also in much better condition than the other one. I don't think there's any rust. Uh, so that's certainly a plus. Um, so uh, I guess now all I need to do is flip this on its side, remove the bottom tray so I can get some probes in there. And um, hook it up to a dim bulb tester and an isolation transformer because this is a hot chassis. And let's try firing this puppy up. Here's the underside of the chassis, and in general, it's not a bad job. He used very similar yellow caps to the ones that I used. Uh, although it does look like all the resistors are still the original, including the big sand resistors down here. So if you recall my 12K2, when I popped it open, I found three large black resistors strung in series. And then I replaced it with a modern resistor. This must be what the original one looked like. And likewise, this guy over here. Uh, I can't imagine that none of these resistors have drifted off value, so I will definitely have to go through and check these and probably replace a bunch of them. And I'll double check the capacitor values, but for now I'll assume they're correct. And the one really bad thing is there are still a few old caps in here. One there, one there, one there, and one down in there. And these guys especially are bad because this is the horizontal oscillator circuitry. And that's pretty critical stuff. So if any of those are leaky or flat out bad, um, probably going to have some problems in the horizontal. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. First, I just want to check that when I turn this on, we've got no dead shorts and we've got juice going to all the tube filaments so dim bolt tester, isolation transformer and here we go now this bulb was a little bit higher wattage or sorry lower wattage than I should be using I should have like a 150 in there it's only a 60 that's all I've got on hand but I do have main meter across one of the 6 volt tubes and it's creeping up so that is very good. If there was a dead short, this would be zero. I also don't see or smell anything smoking. I'm going up and up. It should be uh, ideally around 6.3, but uh, I can because the bulb is restricting the flow. And I do see tube filaments lighting up. It's pretty faint, so I don't think my camera will pick that up. But uh, some of those tubes are lighting up under there. Alright, I'm going to turn this back off and switch the leads around to check the output of this voltage doubler. Okay, we're seeing about 170 volts DC on the output of the voltage doubler, which is pretty much what I would expect because of the, again, the 60 watt light bulb restricting the flow of electricity a bit. Uh, according to the schematic, it should be around 265, 270. Uh, but just the fact that we've got positive voltage in the right ballpark, that's a very good sign. So, next up, um, well, I just noticed there's a missing 1B3 rectifier tube, so that's got to get back in there. And then I need to come up with uh, an approximate resistor value to uh, simulate the field coil being in place. I checked the field coil resistance on the one good speaker I do have and got right about 90 ohms. Just to play it safe, I went with a 120 ohm power resistor. I've got it soldered in right here. It's right across the wires that go to the speaker connector. They come through a hole in the chassis down there, go right over to these two points. 
As for the speaker itself, I dug out a 4 ohm permanent magnet speaker and wired that into the plug here. And I put in a new old stock 1B3. So I think we are all ready to do a real power-up test. Oh, well, I've got my meter attached across the 6V6 audio output tube at a point where I should get about 190 volts DC if everything is working correctly. So here goes. It's a good sign. Jumps up higher than the 190. Then as the tubes heat up, this should start dropping down. And there we go. And so let's see, uh, see all the tube filaments are lighting up. Can hear some cracking. That's probably the high voltage. Got about 183 or so. Yeah. Speaker's just buzzing, but it is reacting to the volume control. Let's see, no image in the CRT yet. But I haven't tried any of the controls back here. Let's do the obvious one. Intensity. Oh, well, there we go. All right. Next to that is focus. And then we got the vertical controls, I think. Yeah, those are the vertical controls. <laughs> and just like the others, they got the same problem with the vertical collapsing. And let's see, here's horizontal sync. Yep, yeah, that is the same problem where it shorts out and freaks out. And I adjust it too, so uh, I'm sure I have to clean these controls if nothing else. I also noticed kind of curiously that these two controls have knobs on them. And my other said none of the controls have knobs. And this is the horizontal and vertical hold, so they probably figured people would be adjusting these more often than any of the others. And for convenience, they put uh, some knobs on them. Alright, so we got some horrible buzzing coming out of the speaker, and we have a ghostly image on the speaker. Let's see if I can actually pull anything in. A little bit of static as I change the channel clunker. I'm going to hook up an antenna. Uh, right now I don't have anything. I just have the uh, antenna terminals hanging loose here. Okay, I've got a video source hooked up now and I just can't pull anything in. So next I'm going to check the tubes that came with this set. Because I didn't replace all of them. Uh, the ones in the outer front and the 6CB6, the 12 AT7, and a couple others um, are of unknown state. That They just came with this chassis when I bought it. Maybe they're bad. I hope so. That would be a simple solution to the problem. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to start debugging and checking all the resistors and capacitors and so on. But, very good sign. The flyback's good. All the major circuitry is good. The, the transformers are good and so on. So... Very good sign. I went through and replaced every tube that came with this set and unfortunately it didn't help. I also swapped out my 5AXP round test CRT for an 8XP uh, rectangular test CRT just because uh, this is uh, actually a rectangular uh, set. But uh, it keeps sliding up back out of the yoke, so I kind of have to push it in to get more of a rectangular picture. But as you can see, still no picture, no sound. So, uh, you know, hey, I'm still optimistic though. All the critical stuff is still good. And I'll just pick up where the other guy left off and replace those last few caps and check the rest of the resistors. But I'm afraid that is all for tonight.